So with this video, we're going to talk about the fundamentals of the select statement. Um, the way I'm going to focus uh, this video is by um, making it so it should be available for any user of SQL. Now, what I mean by that is that if you are using Oracle, it should work. If you're using SQL, it should work. If you're using Microsoft Access, it should work. And also if you're using MySQL. What I'm going to do throughout the video as well is just sort of highlight things which differ between the packages. Mainly my background is SQL Server and I have used MySQL Server quite a bit as well. Um, I find MySQL is very good but it's also very bad at the same time and what I mean by that is um, MySQL is a stickler for um, capital letters and making sure you put your symbols perfectly right which really can drive people up the wall so what I'm going to try and do with these videos is as we do the select statements I'm going to put the the viewpoint of it being a, a genericized piece of SQL which you can apply to all of your different um, products out there so if there is a pitfall I'll I'll try and put it in um, if you find pitfalls through these videos which are specific to a um, database source such as Oracle or MySQL which I have missed please put a comment on the pcteach.me website related to this post and then what I'll either do is update the video or um, make it available as a separate video later on of a pitfalls um, style video so enough talking let's get on with it what we're going to do is we're going to create a new query and my assumption here is you understand what a field, a table and a row is. What we're going to want to do is return some information back. Now I'm using the good old Northwind database which you can obtain from the Microsoft website. It is a little dated nowadays but it is still very handy for newbies to get used to um, SQL. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to start off with the select statement and then I'm going to put a spacebar in and then star from employees and if I press F5 on my keyboard that will return the results alternatively I could choose execute up here because I generally use the keyboard a lot in SQL because you're typing all the while F5 becomes extremely natural to me um, next thing is um, about running a select statement I'm just going to add another select statement underneath it Okay, so select star from customers. Now, if I F5 or click on execute, what you'll see, I'll just drag this up slightly, it should have returned both um, data sets into our window here. So we can see that we've got the employees in the first window and the customers in the second window. Now, okay, that's great. That's exactly what we told it to do. But this is something that you may not be aware of, is if you highlight the text first, or the SQL, I should say, then press F5 or execute, watch what happens. It only returns what you've got highlighted. Now this is more exclusively to the um, SQL Server Management Studio. There are, there are other studios out there which will work for Oracle which will do the same sort of thing. But MySQL, because most of you will be using MySQL through a web browser, this you've got to be more careful of. Um, I don't think you can do this. Um, so you've got to be a little bit more careful. So generally, if you're talking about SQL Server, you can do this option. If you're using MySQL, you can't. Now, I'm not interested in customers, so I'm going to just delete that. But just bear in mind that what you have highlighted in um, Microsoft SQL Server will actually um, be the thing that's run rather than the whole thing. Right. Select stuff from employees. Okay. No don't like it. What I want to do is I want to fine tune the results here. So what I'm going to do is go on to a couple of lines and I'm going to type in employee ID, comma, and then last name, comma, first name, and comma title, and just get those in. Now I'm going to get rid of the star because I just don't want it at all. If you're going to be a database developer that's worth its salt, you should never use select star. The only time you would use it is if you're doing investigation work um, to fix a problem. Any of your reports, anything like that, you should be precise with the fields you've got. So it's the least amount of impact on database performance and network because you have to ultimately pull all this information back. Northwind's only got nine rows here, but 
let's take a real life database that I'm working on, it has 1.7 million rows. There is an impact on performance. So I only bring back the fields that you're actually after. So now if I just press F5, great, I now just see that. Now, if I wanted to order this and put it into any particular um, alphabetical order on, on a specific field, we need to just bring in um, another topic. Um, first of all, you may notice that the employee ID is already in a numerical order, which is following the row numbers off to the side. Now, this is because this column is special. It's very, very special. Every table should have one of these, and it's known as the primary key. Now, I'm going to discuss what primary keys are in a completely independent video, but suffice to say, a primary key is the most important field in your table. It basically indicates the order in which things fire. The primary key as well has to be unique, so you should never see the number 5 repeated in the um, employee ID column. It's a way of you indexing your information, but as I say, I'm going to talk about this in an independent video to this. So, because it's the primary key, it automatically orders by primary key. So if we wanted to change the order, we have to override what the default index is set on. So we do this by going underneath the table that we're telling it to select, and we put in the word order, then a spacebar, then by. And then we tell it what fields we want. So I want to order it by the last name. So I'd say order by last name. Now, if I press F5, you'll notice by default, it's automatically doing it in alphabetical order in an ascending format, i.e. it's going from A to Z, A to Z. What if I wanted it the other way around? I wanted it so I have the um, Z to A, Z to A approach. Well, what we do is we just go to the end of where we've put in the field, and there are two options available to us. We can do ASC for ascending, which just means if I run it, no differences because it's exactly the same, or DESC for descending. And as you can see, it's changed it. What if I wanted to order it in a, in a different way in regards to um, two things? I want it in last name and then by first name. Well, no problem. All you do is you put in a comma just like you've done with the fields and then you specify the next, the next field that you want to order it by. So I'm going to put in first name ascending. Oh, spell first right would help. There we go. And run it. And it won't really look like anything's differed much because everything's pretty much in the same place. Let's have a look. Dodsworth, Devolio, it, it, it's going to... Um, it's going to order them in this way regardless. What we're better off doing is probably ordering it by title. So I'm going to do is just delete all of this and I'm going to say order by title and then F5. Uh, we've got a lot of sales representatives. Now what I want to do now is then change the order of this. So let's say I want um, the last name in alphabetical order. So I'll say order by title, comma, last name. And because by default ascending is the default option, as you can see it's now changed the order. Now, something that if you are self-taught, you probably don't know, which I find very useful, is if this is written in in um, in gold, you're never going to change that at all. What you would do is you could just do order by two comma three, which would say order by the second column and the third column. So column one is employee ID, column two is the last name. So order by last name followed by first name. And then if we run that, still does the same job, but we can define by what's known as column ordinals instead. You don't have to do that. Quite a few developers do do that. I'm one of them as well. Um, but you could just say order by last name, wh whatever you want. However, that's another option available to you if, if you so wish. Now, to finish this off, I'm just going to introduce you to an um, option called concatenation, which is a way that you can merge fields together. So what I want to do is get rid of the last name and first name columns and just make one new column known as full name. So we just go in here, we just type in first name, then we use the plus symbol, and then last name. And if I just get rid of the order by, I'm not interested in that now. And if I just F5, you'll notice that I now have a new column off to the side, which has got the full name in it. However, two problems. There's no space between the first name and the last name. We'll fix that in a second. And also, we need to change the um, heading, because at the moment it doesn't know what to call this field. So, going up to the top, fixing the gap issue first, just after the plus, put in a spacebar, 
quote, space, quote, and then another plus. And then if you press F5, there we go. We've now got a gap between the words. And then finally, to fix the field problem, we need to make a field alias. And this is done by putting the word as and then full name. And there you have it. We've now created a concatenated field that puts them together. Now, there are some pitfalls with this, which we'll discuss on our next video. So for now, that's our basic of a select statement covered. Thanks.